Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Future Fiber. This is your host Jenny, and this is my dying plant. We're at episode twenty. Jeez, I have no idea of Future Fiber Knitting Podcast. This is a place where I talk about all the crafty things that I do. It's mostly knitting in real lifetime. You guys have seen one video that I put out, like maybe like a week ish ago, but in like real life time, non YouTube time, I'm sitting down to film for the first time in like I don't know, like three four weeks. So it's been it's been it's been a while. I'm trying to get back into it. You know, like it always takes some time when you've not sat in front of a camera looking at yourself talking to kind of get back into the swing of things. Yeah. So all of that said. Lots of things have happened in the past, like, honestly, two-ish months that I just haven't, like, really talked about because, you know, not a lot of people really, like, care. <laughs> You're here for knitting, not really, like, my life. So I'm going to give a brief update and then, like, I mean, you could skip to the sections if you want. Yeah, 2024, what a weird year. Back in February, that's... Uh, that was like my 10 year anniversary with my boyfriend and then um, we got engaged and then in March I turned 30 so that was another milestone that I needed to add to my mental roster of existing as a person in this planet earth and then I don't know there was just a lot of things going on I had a lot going on at work my cat got sick She's fine now, but she did get a little sick, so that had us spooked for a little bit. My friends also had big life events. One of my friends is having a baby. One of my friends had her birthday party. Another one of my friends is, you know, doing a big project. I don't know, it's been a lot. So I haven't had as much time to knit. So unfortunately, there's not a lot to show today. I thought I would just check in now before I forgot literally everything that I was working on so that we have a constant, you know, decent stream of information coming in and not me just like by the end of the project being like, here's look, look at what I made. And I remember nothing about this project. So that's why I sat down to film today. What I am wearing, I stole this back from my boyfriend for today. This is the Ingrid sweater, man. Um, by Petite Knit, and I knit it up in Feisty Fibers 100% um, Canadian wool in the colorway Expanse. I do have a couple little finished objects. One of them I don't have with me, um, so I'm actually going to cut to a clip of me talking about it now. Hello. I just wanted to talk about this finished object before I give it away to a friend. So this is the Petite Knit Festival Sweater Baby. And I knit the size that's second to last largest. Weird way of saying it, but I think that's the six to nine months size. So I'm pretty sure this is on gauge. I don't know, I didn't measure, but I used the right gauge of yarn and right needles this time. So I think it should be to gauge, but I really have no idea or understanding of how small babies are at that size. So, I mean, the baby will be the judge of if this sweater fits or not, but I'll let you know in about uh, six to nine months because that's the baby's not here yet. That's why I made this larger size. Um, but I used just a bunch of scrap yarns that I had left over. This is the Knitting for Olive uh, Cotton Merino, and I forget the color name. It's like pale blue or something. And then the white part is Regia Sock Yarn. Um, I just had this like cream color. So I used that to make the first bobble. The second bobble is a pink, like variegated hand dyed yarn that I got from uh, the Biscotti Yarns advent calendar <laughs> from 2022. So yeah, a bunch of scrap yarns. And then I ran out of the uh, cotton merinos, which is why the edges are contrast but I think it turned out pretty balanced looking it looks intentional <laughs> and I had just enough yarn of the knitting for olive to knit the sleeves so I was like really playing yarn chicken I have like zero zero yarn left over so I would say this is a pretty successful knit I will say like knitting on a small gauge like this the you can see the back where the seam is a little more because I didn't have the right size kind of needles 
and my tension was really bad throughout the whole thing. I thought, you know, blocking would fix it, but it only fixed it like this much, not like a lot. Which is a shame, but you know, maybe it'll even out with wear. Yeah, I hope my friend likes it. I hope her baby likes it. We'll find out. But this is the festival sweater. It's so cute. And I finished this in like under a week, like four days because um, I was procrastinating. I think I could have finished it a little bit sooner if I did a smaller size, obviously, but um, it is what it is. Um, yeah, but the last thing I really wanted to add about that festival sweater is that I don't know if I really liked the increase section. I like the idea of the increases being hidden w with the bobbles, but I didn't really love the process of making the bobbles actually. I wonder if it'll be less finicky if I was working with a thicker yarn. I do kind of want to make an adult version of the festival sweater, so you know, if all that works out, maybe I will, you know, let I'll report back on that, but something about the it'll probably have to be a while before I make another one because I don't know. I just don't like making the same patterns like twice in a row. I make a lot. I've, you know, historically made a lot of petite knit patterns. So I am trying to, you know, I'm trying to branch out, believe it or not. That's where we are with that finished object. My friend liked it and I can't wait to see her baby wearing it. And I am planning to do a little bit more baby knits just so that um, I can send some stuff over to her. And also, a follower of mine kindly sent me some of her baby hat patterns so I'll leave her link and then also put an image of some of her baby hat patterns here so if you want to take a look at that take a look I think it's just really cute um, the strawberry hat especially is really cute so I gotta see if I have like the yarn to make that um speaking of strawberry this is not that exciting because it sucks but the color is pretty exciting. I talked about this in the last podcast episode, but this is the two by two rib socks that I knit up with Cascade Heritage in the colorway Christmas Red. And I finished the other, I think in the last episode I had, you know, one sock and now I have two socks, so I have a pair. So now that I've shown them off in a podcast, I can actually finally wear them. I was like saving these <laughs> um, before I like put them on my feet and this is how they turned out. I think they look really good. I think I could have done a little bit more in the length of the cuff because I put, these are fine, but when I put them on my feet, I didn't like account for the extra shrinkage and the length that'll happen from, you know, it getting wider around my legs. So it's not as long as I thought it would turn out to be, but I think overall the effect is very nice. And the color is, contrasted with the sweater I think it's looking really good so I'm excited to have these as like an accessory point I think I mentioned before um, what I did here but I did 60 stitches in the round and then I did one by one rib on the top for about like what is that like two centimeters and then I did the cuff just as two by two rib down and then I did the heel turn as just German short row heel here you can see simple and then I turned the heel and then just you know had the the top of the foot be two by two and the bottom just stock in it and then decreased for the toe so very simple socks I think I'm off the sock mojo a little bit actually um I just haven't really felt like knitting socks when I could be spending time knitting other bigger projects. So I think this might be my last pair of socks for a little bit, but I'm sure once it gets to the winter time and then I'm working with a lot more like thicker yarn projects or um, projects that I don't find as like fun to knit, maybe I'll like knit up other socks, but this is this might be my last pair for a little bit. I think with these socks, I have a specific way that I was thinking I'll style them. Um, I'm thinking I'll wear them with, well, I think they'll look good with like black sneakers or white sneakers, but I was thinking I have these like white kind of derby, derby style shoes um, that are, 
did I say white? Yes, white derbies, white cream derby style shoes. Um, so I was thinking I'll wear um, that with this and then like loose flowy pants or even like a white skirt I think could look nice. Um, so those are just some of the ways that I was thinking of styling this, but I think it maybe I gotta hurry up because I think the red sock trend is like kind of dying down. This is why you shouldn't really ch chase trends, um, especially with knitting, because once you're done, you might be kind of out of out of style now, but it is what it is, you know? I think those are the two finished objects that I have. I really don't, I didn't really knit that much, so I don't have a ton to show, but I do have an exciting um, work in progress. But before I get to that, maybe I'll just talk about all the the existing ones. This is my progress on my waffle loop neck uh, warmer. It's not, it didn't get very far. This is the back panel and I'm really liking how the fabric is working up and I love the pattern of the waffle. It's just that, um, now that it's not cold anymore, although today it's kind of cold actually, it's like above 50 degrees or so in New York today, it just doesn't feel as fun to knit a winter accessory when I know that I'm not going to be wearing it. Um, so it's been stalling a little bit, but I knit like one or two rows as I'm like in a meeting or something so it's just been a really slow going process so I think it'll speed up once I finish the back panel but this is just what I've been working on you know this is uh the uh, Martha's Vineyard alpaca farm yarn um so that's the progress on this guy another long time resident here um the Minto sweater being knit up with whole scar and super soft in the colorway princess and pearl soho piri in the colorway some sort of lavender thing i don't know this is how far i got on the body last time i think i had just joined in the round for the body section and here i've done two uh pattern repeats so far so this is how long the body is currently you can see that the armhole is very big I am hoping that the armhole will kind of like close up once I um, pick up the stitches and kind of start knitting the sleeves, but it is very, very oversized. So it's going to be, I think, just as oversized as a sweater that I'm currently wearing, which is a men's sweater. <laughs> um, I have no real, you know, I don't really feel badly about that. I like oversized look sweaters a lot. So it's turning out well. I'm just a little bit concerned about the length because the pattern repeat for the body section before you even get to the ribbing and the bottom ribbing is quite long i believe it's like about 12 centimeters or 10 at least and i just feel like maybe if i do that the sweater will be too long i don't want everything that i own to be cropped and i don't necessarily want this item to be cropped either this mento sweater but I also don't want it to be so long that it covers my butt entirely, if you know what I mean. I think I still want to have like options for layering like longer button downs that I have with it. So I might have to decrease the number of section repeats that I do or the pattern repeats. Because I think the pattern repeat calls for like five total repeats for the my size that I'm knitting, which is, um, which is size lowercase b. So I am hoping that I could get away with doing either three or four section repeats. I'll just have to like, you know, see how it turns out. Um, and this is how much length the two section repeats, pattern repeats got me. So if I did another one, it would be like about that long. And I think that's okay, Cu coupled with the, the longer rib section. So I'll just have to kind of play it by ear um, but I'm almost done with the body. Well, I, uh, okay, maybe I got a little bit more to go with the body, but it feels good that I'm like getting there, you know? And this has definitely, be, definitely been a slower going project because it's so big. It, this is quite heavy right now, the way that it is. And it's not really good for me to carry around. If I'm going somewhere, then I will you know, usually pick up a different project <laughs> to carry with me. So this just hasn't gotten a lot of love. Um, although I, I do take it on like really long car rides and I've been going to, I've been on a couple longer car rides simply because my boyfriend and I were looking at wedding venues. So we've had a couple longer drives. So 
that was what was happening with that. Um, yeah, slow and steady progress. Maybe by June it'll be done. <laughs> so just in time for the summer. But I wanted to show you how much of the whole scar and super soft that I have left with my current progress on this. This cone looks like it hasn't been touched. This is so much yarn and I didn't realize how much yarn this was until I was knitting this up. I only have a little bit more to go with the body and I have this much yarn left. The sleeves are not gonna take the rest of this cone. So I gotta find something else to knit with this purple yarn. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I have to look at how much I actually bought because I bought two quantities of the cone. It wasn't like, I think one cone quantity is 250 grams, right? So I bought two of that. So I must have bought 500 grams and that's how much this is. And this is a hefty boy of yarn. I've barely made a dent and I'm kind of scared to see how much more I will get out of this. I might get sick of this color afterwards. I don't know. And now we have new cast ons. I didn't, I don't know. I just, I just needed a little more variety, a little more spice up my life. So I cast on a couple of new things. Well, I say couple, it's just two things. But the first one that I'll talk about is with yarn. I mean, both of these, you've seen the yarn before because I've talked about it. This side is more interesting. This is the Thin Sweater by Will and & Beyond. And I'm working on the yoke section right now. I'm almost done with the yoke section. You can see the cross um, detail in the front of the neckline here still. And the yarn that I'm using to knit this up is the yarn that I got from Yarn Farm Kingston. It's their house yarn, Romney Merino 2-ply. And then each ball was 375 yards and I have three of these. So I, would, I should be able to barely squeak out this thin sweater. I know it looks really, really small. Like it looks like I have a long way to go, but I've finished doing the sleeve increase. It's a, okay, so this pattern is a saddle shoulder detail. I don't know if you can see that, but this is a saddle and then this is the, the increase for the sleeve that I'm doing here. And I've already done the saddle shoulder part and then the sleeve increase part. So now I'm just having to increase for the arm um, armhole and sleeve at the same time, I think is what's happening. Um, and once I'm done with that section, then I'm done with the yoke. And it looks really small, but it's supposed to be pretty close fitting to the armhole. So I don't think it's going to take that long to finish. I've been experiencing the joys of working with a yarn that is kind of easy to knit with. I, every time I just knit with like a single strand of wool, I kind of get reminded of like, oh my God, this is actually a nice knitting experience and I don't have to like worry about the yarn splitting or, um, I don't know. I'm just able to knit really fast with it. Like my, I don't knit super fast, honestly, like my knitting speed, I would say for a continental knitter isn't in incredibly fast, <laughs> but whenever I knit a kind of smaller gauge item with uh, just wool yarn, I'm like, that's kind of an enjoyable experience actually. So maybe I'm being converted into a smaller gauge wool yarn garment creating kind of person, question mark. <laughs> um, so yeah, this has been really nice and a different pace. And this project is fairly small, so I've been able to take it to different places and I was just like I need some sort of stocking that project I got sick of doing the I got slightly slightly just not not too much but just slightly sick of doing the cable pattern for the mental sweater so I thought changing it up with this kind of a little bit more basic stocking up project would be nice although I'm sure I will retract my words once we get to the body section and I'm in infinite stocking at hell but you know, then I'll just go see a movie or something. So that's the update on this new cast on. It looks really scrunched up and terrible, but it feels really, It. this is also a yarn that's not very super soft, but it's not bad against my skin. I think I do well with wool, um, but I don't do as well with like prickly kind of longer fiber um, fibers. 
longer hair fibers. There we go. Like Angora or something like that. I, I feel like I would also find that kind of itchy. And also, I left this on my couch and I didn't realize, but I sat on this needle so it's not curved. So I might have to get another pair of Chiagus, but I'm working with it for now because I'm trying to be good. I It's bent, but it's not like I can knit with this, you know? I can knit with this, it's just bent. Yeah, don't, don't sit on your needles. This is my last cast on, uh, last new cast on, work in progress. Oh, this is also scrunched too. I should have, I should have split for the sleeves before. Yeah, I'm doing a test knit for the cognac sweater or cardigan rather by Atelier Castan. And Marine is the designer for this cardigan and I first knew about her brand because I think Hypnit Hooray, she did a test knit for the cognac sweater. And so I saw that and started following her there. And then I saw that she is releasing a pattern for the cognac cardigan. And I was looking for a top down, I think I mentioned this a couple times before, but I was, meant, I was looking for a top down set and sleeve cardigan pattern to make with this pink yarn combination that I had. Um, so I thought it was a perfect kind of fit. And then I was also looking at the gauge and I thought that was um, very perfect for this as well. So that's why I applied to test knit. The test knit is running until the 20, ooh, I wanna say the 28th of May. So there is still a fair bit of time left, but this has been a really fast knit for me. And so I've been kind of flying through <laughs> the test knit a little bit, but so, so have everyone else in the chat. So I think this is going to be a really quick knit if uh, you decide to knit it once it releases. Some of the features so far have been that this is knit on a, well, I'm knitting this on a 5.5 millimeter needle, but the original pattern to gauge calls for six millimeter needles with a fingering weight yarn and a lace weight mohair or surrey alpaca or something like that to kind of like fill in the gap. So it's supposed to be a very like fluffy open <laughs> fabric. And Normally, I think with this yarn combination, I tend to knit DK weight patterns, so like a four millimeter. So that combined is making this a really, really quick knit. But the yarns that I'm using, um, I've had these in my stash for a little bit. The, the base yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Peary in the color Way Peony. And I am holding with it. Um, this is not it. I don't know where this is. I have a little bit here. This is the Pearl Soho Broom in the colorway Pink Fog. And this is discontinued, as is this. I've talked about it already, so I'm not gonna go into it too much, but I should, I believe, I should have enough to finish. If not, it's going to, I'm going to have to find a different mohair to hold with this as well. Um, it's really the mohair that's the problem. It's not so much the base yarn. I think I have enough of the base yarn because I hoarded like three more balls of it after I found out that Brooklyn Tweed Peary was discontinued. It's a whole thing, but yeah, I think I should have enough for the test knit. If not, I also found that Pearl Soho, they do make another mohair and they have the colorway Pink Fog still in a different mohair. So I think the thing with broom is that it has mohair, it's either the cord is a little bit thicker or it's it has more mohair wrapped around it. So this is slightly thicker than regular mohair, lace weight mohair. Um, so if I found that the pink fog colorway in the other, in the other mohair, line that Pearl Soho has is like similar enough, then I will just hold it double or something to kind of like meet gauge. I had to drop down to a 5.5 to meet gauge for this pattern because I do knit looser 
my gauge is definitely looser when I'm knitting in the flat and not in the round because my pearl tension is not very good. And you can kind of tell in the fabric here, it's not very even and neat, but I'm hoping like washing it will kind of like block it all out. Yeah, my tension generally is not very good. So I wouldn't say I am a wonderful knitter or a very technical knitter or anything like that. I would still consider myself like a confident beginner, maybe like slightly veering towards intermediate. So that's where I am. <laughs> I am at the point where I actually need to split for the sleeves. And I think I only took, mm, I don't know. I think I only took a couple days of like serious knitting to get here. I did most of the yoke in like one day, honestly. And then like for the past couple of days, I had other things come up. So I haven't had as much time to work on this, but yeah, it's turning out to be a really fast knit. And I'm really liking how the the shaping of the, the arm side is turning out. I think it's gonna look really good. I am test knitting the size three and the pattern kind of like suggests that you measure your shoulders and then base your sizing off of the shoulders because it's supposed to be, you know, very like fitted to your shoulder measurements. So yeah, there is a couple variants with the finishing, like the edges. Um, the sample uses I-cord edging, so it looks a little bit more like a jacket. I think I'm going to be opting for a rib, one by one rib. So it looks more like a cardigan. So you have some different options there. And it's finished in the front with a double knitted uh, button band. So that'll be interesting to work on as well. Um, those, those always take a long time, but they always look good at the end. So I do love me some double knitted button bands. So that's where we are. And this is around that cardigan. I know that Petite Knit is releasing a, or in the middle of working on a round knit set and sleeve cardigan as well. So, you know, maybe this is the trend. I didn't find that particularly confusing. I thought the pattern was well written and it wasn't too much to keep track of the increases and things like that. But I would say maybe this wouldn't be as simple as if this was knit bottom up, but then the, you know, additional benefit is that you can try on as you go. So it's just, you know, it's all a matter of preference, isn't it? But that's my progress on the Kanya cardigan. I'm excited to finish it up and wear it for the spring before it gets to be 1 million degrees in New York City. And I have a couple of acquisitions, kind of, you know, prepping my sail for the summer. I'm going to start with this sock yarn. <laughs> well, they're all sock yarns, honestly. Like, spoiler alert, they're all sock yarns, but you know, you just, just, just hear me out. First, I don't know if I've mentioned that I've got two balls of Regio Tweed. Oh, sorry, Regia four ply. I have this and I have a cream, like off-white color ball, but I, my boyfriend actually bought me these two balls of yarn because he shrunk um, some of my socks, handmade socks, accidentally made it into his laundry load. And my uh, petite knit ruffle socks that I knit, last year. Yeah, those are not with us anymore. They're in a better place. They're not with us anymore. Um, they're, they got very small and unwearable. So I was very upset and he bought me some new yarn to, so that I could knit, you know, different ones. But coincidentally, I don't think I'm, I don't know if I want to knit the ruffle socks again. I didn't think it was very enjoyable, honestly. Like I did an experiment where I knit one top down and I knit one bottom up. And I thought the bottom up one turned out way better than the top down one, but, or rather, you know what I mean? Like cuff down versus toe up. I thought the toe up one was much easier to knit than the bot uh, the cuff down one, which is the original intended uh, sock pattern. But anyways, long story short, I have two balls of sock yarn that I'm going to have to figure out what to make with, but I am like off the sock train temporarily. So maybe these won't get used until then. Um, but that's that's where we are with the sock yarns that I got from my boyfriend that I extorted from him and We have some summer yarns that I wanted to try for a little bit. So I've got some New yarns black and white. I know very 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 um, boring and basic but Yeah, girl is a uh, She's needing some basic shirts so for the summer. So these are the same yarn, just in different colors. 
And the yarn is Kobasi by Haiku. And this is a 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 21% elastic nylon, and 8% silk yarn. So a lot of, you know, mix of blends and stuff here. But it's designed to be a sock yarn that is like meant for the summer. But I bought these yarns to knit a, well, two summer tops with them. And I don't know how I actually came across this yarn. I think I was in search of like a fingering weight yarn that wasn't, um, didn't really have a huge like wool content or any wool content. I think it will, uh, that's what I was looking for. Some sort of like cottony, like summery yarn um, blend that would stretch well with a camisole you know if I knit this up into a camisole like it would stretch and retain its shape but the, it doesn't have any wool content I think that's what I was searching for and then I came across this um through some internet finds and I think I actually saw this in person in a yarn shop I don't remember where it what definitely wasn't in New York but I remember touching and feeling like yeah that seems doable so I've been wanting to try this for a couple years now and I finally got my hands on it, but I actually think it's getting discontinued because everywhere I saw it, it was on sale. So that would be really sad if I got this and I liked it and it's like going away for good. So um, if anyone has more information about that, feel free to let me know. I haven't worked with it yet, so I cannot give you any, uh, you know, I can't give you any more information, but I will sh be sure to kind of keep you updated. Each. 50 gram skein has uh, 201 meters or 220 yards. And this is designed to be, it's a, it's a fingering weight yarn. So it's designed to be knit up with needles that are 2.5 to 3.5 millimeters. And I am thinking with the white one, I will knit the Batty Tea Light. That is a pattern by Jose Lada. And I didn't realize that I bought that pattern last year, but apparently I did. So I found that in my Ravelry library and I was like, oh, I guess I should knit that. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to make with this white yarn. So I'll have like a white, you know, ribbed pattern t-shirt. And with the black yarn, I haven't really decided yet. Um, I think it's going to be some sort of t-shirt or maybe I'll make some sort of uh, another sleeveless camisole type. Uh, thing, but I'm like thinking maybe I'll make the Melitas top um, from Vert Knits because I like the way that it has it's reversible, you know, it has this U neck or square neck shape, but then you can turn it around and then the V neck part could be what you wear in the front. And I like the waist detail on it where you kind of like fold it over and it shapes down like that. I don't know if I'm going to keep that, maybe I'll just have it be straight up and down, but. I've, I feel like that would be a nice top to knit for the summer. Depending on how this yarn wears, that could also be like a going out top. It, I say this like I go anywhere. I don't go out anywhere, but you know, I could wear it to like a nice restaurant without feeling it feeling kind of like, I don't know. And last year about this time, I think I made a couple videos that were, that are still getting a lot of traction. Like, honestly, like, the t-shirt and sleeveless top video, those are coming back around. Seems like people are looking at those. Since I made those videos, there were a ton of other new patterns that got released and that might fit the criteria better, but I don't really plan on making an update video because I'm like, I don't really, you guys know. You guys are in the know. Like, you don't need me to tell you what to knit. Yeah, it's been an exciting time. Lots of things happening. Um, not a lot of knitting, but, Hopefully I can get back to knitting some, some, you know, wrapping up some of these projects and getting to cast on a couple more things. I think I'm just like, I don't know, in the mood to kind of knit something that's new. You know, I don't know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, say a prayer for this plant. I keep I keep watering him, but he just like acts like he's dying all the time. So I don't know if he's actually dying or if I need to like repot it or something. I don't know. I keep killing these plants and it's, it's a bad time. Only the strongest may survive in this household where I kill everything. So have a nice day, I guess. I'll see you guys. I'll, I'll see you guys whenever I see you. Okay. Bye.